Hi, welcome to this SQL tutorial video and today I'm going to do a simple video on inner joins. Um, I'm going to talk about inner joins, the logic and the rules behind using inner joins and how we can join to the same table um, within the same set of SQL. So in SQL we generally have um, multiple tables that store separate information. So on screen you can see I've got my employees data and I've got my office um, data and there's a reason why we don't include the office data and the employees data and that's because we don't like duplicate information so what we do is if we want one set of information to relate to another set of information we've got to do something uh, we've got to have a column that has um, a field that will link one table to another so <clears throat> next to each employee we have a department and we've got an office. All it is, is a, a code. Um, it can be a number, it can be some sort of unique uh, identifier. And you can use these codes to link to other tables. So in this office code, uh, MN01, we can look at the office table for MN01 and we can see that's the Manchester office. Um, in the Manchester office, you've got an address, uh, a set of address data, which is fine. We so in that way, when we've got this office information, if the Manchester office change address, we would come to the office table and change the address in here. If we didn't have it like that and we had every bit of information in the employees table, there will be duplicate references of the Manchester office and the Manchester address. So any changes would have to be made multiple times against anything that referenced um, the Manchester office. So it's far better to have more tables so we don't have a duplication of data. So when it comes to making changes, we don't have to worry about it. So with that in mind, um, I'm going to start building a bit of SQL. So if I just get this back, um, when we're doing our uh, reference our tables, we will use um, aliases for each table so that we know when we return in particular columns, which table we're going to to get that data. So to do an inner join we begin by writing inner join and then we decide on the table that we're going to use um, in our join and it generally has to be a table that has some sort of um, uh, a column that links both tables so we can because i've just been showing uh, there we can link the office or the department to employees so let's do that if we link the department uh, departments table, we'll give it an alias of DE. So in a join new table with an alias, and then we say on, um, and then we need to give it the the corresponding column. So um, in the employee table, I'm going to link it on the department, um, and we say equals, and then in the department table, I'm going to link it to the department code. And I know that just because I know the, the tables. And if I run this, wherever there is a corresponding um, department, we're getting some results back. Now, you may have noticed that when I initially ran this, um, there are 22 um, entries, uh, 22 employees. Some of them you can see do not have departments. When I do an inner join to a departments table, it's reduced the results to 18. Um, because I'm doing an inner join, it will only return those uh, results where there is a department that matches a department code. So because some of the employees do not have department codes, they will no longer be returned as part of this SQL. Now, there are other joins to get around this. Um, the left joins, right joins, there's, there's different ways of doing this, but within an inner join, it will limit the results that get returned based on having a match between this department code and the department code in your joining table, which is why we're getting less results. And we're going to get less results still when I link to the office table. So we can see that this is missing an office. Um, this is missing an office. So we're going to get issues with that as well. Uh, when I join to the offices, but let's just do that. Um, em dot office equals ofc dot office code. So if I run that, 
and you get less results. And this is all based on an employee having a valid office and a valid department. Um, so I've got a lot of information here. Actually, I don't want to see all of this. I just want to see the full name of the employee. Um, I want to see the hire date. Um, and I want to see the department name. The office name and the office manager. Um, oh, actually, and the office city. Okay, so we're now getting this information here. Um, I've got another table called cities. And if I do a link to that, we, we're now not going to link anymore to this employees table because the employee doesn't have a city column, but the offices table has a city column here and we can link that to our cities table so you've got these codes that mean a city name but it is this cities table that maintains the data on the city name so if i do a, a link to the uh, offices table via the city column and link it to the city code column and i run that oh uh, let's return that let's return the city name we now get in city names now <clears throat> that's um you know a nice simple uh, exercise of inner joints um you've got to be careful in the order of which you do your joints so they've logically got to make sense so the employee table begins here and we've got a valid joint to the department's table so that's fine then it goes to the offices then it goes to the city but what i cannot do is i can't take this join here and put it up here because this join is looking for something called OFC which is this alias here so because it's referencing this alias it has to come after this line here otherwise it logically it doesn't exist yet in the SQL order so let me just put another line in here and I want to include now the employee ID so let's run this again so this employee ID column here um, we've got this officer manager column here um, in the offices table and that is just an ID and it references the employee ID in the employees table so we are able to do a join back to our employees table to get the name of our employee of the supervisor or the office manager rather of where our employee works so we can do an inner join regardless of the fact that we've got one up here to employees we can create another employees um join what we cannot do is use the same alias logically that makes sense it would just be confusing so if we tried to use em it won't allow that and it shouldn't so what we'll do is we'll put um OM for office manager and we'll do a link on the office office manager equals OM dot ID because that is the column that we need to join on we've got this code here for office manager we've got this ID and that's the join um, so what we can do now at the end of our list is we can put in um, the full name of our employee and if you run that and if i give that a uh, an alias that column i can put so if we look here now we now because of the all in the joins we're now reduced to eight um successful results but that's fine if we look here we've got an office manager here of two and the office man the id here too of our employee b uh, two rather the name is employee B so here anything that's referencing office manager ID 2 is referencing employee B which is correct and then if we look at here we've got 10 which is J the office manager for London and if we look at um, the ID 10 it is employee J and that's why we're getting those results here um, I'll do some other videos on um, other types of joins but for now 
hopefully that inner join tutorial was helpful any comments or questions please leave them and i'll reply as soon as i can and as always thanks for your time see you next time